Hello, welcome to today's nature moment. Today we're going to be taking a look at scarlet bee balm and you can see it growing here beside me. It's also known as Oswego tea or crimson bee balm or bergamot tea. I'm going to move it a little bit closer so you can see what the blooms look like. Uh, scarlet bee balm is a perennial herb and it usually grows two to three and a half feet tall. But as you can see, mine is closer to five feet tall. It's really happy in my garden. To prevent the plant from taking over your garden, be sure to remove the seeds uh, when the flowers are done blooming or it will spread everywhere. The large red scentless flowers are nectar rich and are pollinated primarily by ruby-throated hummingbirds and butterflies, especially fritillaries. This plant is native to this area and it's usually found in shady areas along streams or in thickets in the woods. And it blooms late June to early July and into late August. In the late 19th century, the tea made from bee balm was believed to be a remedy for many things, including colic, gas, worms, cold, fever, stomach aches, nosebleeds, just about everything you can think of. They also said that a poultice could be applied to your head if you had a headache. The one that I'm familiar with, and I have tried it before, you can use the uh, resin from the plant and it can be used to heal and soothe bee stings, hence the name bee balm. Now, I don't know about all those remedies that I mentioned, but I do know that it makes a very tasty tea when it's sweetened to taste. It's also good when you mix it with other varieties of tea as well. I hope you've enjoyed this nature moment.